Oh, so we're, we're, we're gonna we're gonna begin. So yeah, this is a very special edition of the desk. I'm your host JCS, the owner, founder, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, my guest today is I guess we can call him the monster or monster, aka the son of God, aka Cody fucking Storm. Uh, if you're Parker Pew or a host of other people, you're probably just gonna turn off right now because you're in just ingrained hatred of this goofy man will just cause you not to tune in anyway, even though. The information probably doesn't even pertain to you. It's just basically a look back, a throwback, if you will, on this dude's career. Now, generally, I don't give a shit about people's careers if they're not Nate Ortiz or Parker or something like that or Dupree. But in Cody's case or Monster's case, it's actually fascinating because um, uh, yesterday on Party Chat, which was a bunch of folks just yapping away, um, he went through some of his history. And I found it to be really, really um, compelling because... He remembers a lot, pretty much everything that, that happened to him in his career in OCW because he had a very weird trajectory because, as I said, OCW is basically about, um, you know, it's, it's competitive and, uh, and, you know, you work from there. But Cody's case is, is incredibly just it's, – it's compelling. It's interesting. And it just goes to show how much of a dirtbag that I am because I don't even remember half of the garbage that I did. And it's also indicative of him as a person because – other than maybe Parker and like a one or two other people, uh, pretty much everyone has done, even myself, uh, a 180 on uh, on his time uh, then, now, and the present, and it's just really fucking fascinating. So, uh, monster buddy, or you want to just call you Storm, Cody? Yeah. What do you want? You want to call you Cody? The majority of my career too, I was. So that's fine. Call you Cody, yeah. So, basically, the reason I'm doing this is also not only is it in- interesting, it's also because uh, I guess current current champions or current people in OCW. And they're like, oh man, you know, they don't appreciate what I'm doing, and and this is so, oh, this is depressing, and and why should I even bother trying so hard if nobody gives a shit? But at the end of the day, it's not really whether we give a shit or not. It's about if you're proud of your work. Now, the, that pertains more to Cody in the sense that if you hear his story, and then you look at it, you apply it to yourself, you'd be like, oh man, I can't even say shit no more. Um, so what I'm gonna do is. I'll have him interject uh, certain par- parts, and certain parts I'll come in to give a little backstory if I can remember. Mm-hmm. But um, for the most part, when did you start, Code? Uh, we started, I got here maybe two weeks, I think, before the Ambition guys got here. So November of, it was the 2011 game, so that makes it 2010, right? Um, I think, oh, it might be 2012. I don't know. It's always, it's always a year early. I yeah, think. so it was November of 2010. Okay, so you, yeah, so you came you came in a little bit earlier than the ambition, and everybody was you know, uh, you know the ambition guys came in, which is if you didn't know the ambition era is essentially uh, the second era in OCW. At one point we had the golden era, which is 2006, and also this is kind of a history lesson for everybody. So if you're listening, get some history, get some lore. 2006 we had the um, the golden era, which was basically a time of prosperity, lots of members, lots of stuff, and there was just so many standouts to the point where if you look at the Hall of Fame. A large chunk of the golden era is actually in the Hall of Fame. Hint, hint. Anyway, fast forward to the Ambition era. You got guys like uh, Tiberius Dupree, Dimsmore, Matt Suda, Patalomai, and on the very tail end, uh, the Hot Garbage Spider. <laughs> <laughs> hot Garbage yeah. Pink Spider. And uh, you can even say Pew because Pew kind of rose up with those guys. And then they went on all to have you know really amazing careers and you never know wink wink nudge nudge maybe come some of them might join the hall of fame in the future i I don't know but to cody uh he was basically on the tail end of that so if you you didn't know like what we do now is we have and i need to take a breath because i'm fucking speaking really fast give me a second (laughs) Ah, a little excited Uh, i love history um if you didn't know, what we have is um, the graduation, which is essentially you have uh, if you had if we had ambition, we'd have the graduation where you would be promoted to the main roster. But since it's a little different now, it's just a forum promotion. So at this point, um, that that class of people I just mentioned, the ambition era, uh, Cody was before them, but not by by that long. But in the span of maybe a month and a half, Cody Storm actually superseded all of them. To become a wrestler, uh, fucking months, months before all of them. Now, do you do you recall the circumstances of how you became a wrestler? I do actually. I Go still ahead. have Go your PM it. from forever ago. <laughs> yes, Go ahead. if you want to read it, read it. Twenty ninth, two thousand eleven, and you said you don't have access to the forum, but I expect someone something from you for the pay per view. Cross wrote an RP inside for your respect. Uh, you are going to have a match, so. 
you all, I don't even know why you were looking for someone for him, but you were. And I can tell you why. Me. Okay. Because um, the gimmick, uh, if I can remember correctly, he had some. He had. Uh, he was coming back. Jose Cross was actually um, an old member of the Golden Era. Uh, he had a tag team with a dude named Adrian Bull. They were kind of. Uh, I guess if you want to use uh, analogies, maybe they were they were part of a thirst era in tw- 2006. They weren't bad. They weren't good. But, you know, depending on who they played, some people didn't like playing them because they were a little bit more, I guess, aggressive, if you will. Right. But anyway, he was coming back, and uh, there was some stipulation that he had on coming back. Like, uh, essentially, it was um, if if he wins his match, he get he gets the job. I think he coming in on, like, on like you know, some anarchy stuff. Like, oh, he's breaking everything. I'm not going to give him a job. So the, the idea was... Okay. He, you know, he wins his match, he gets a job. He loses his match, he's fucked. So, ergo, I said, you know what? I know of an easy win. There's this fucking schmuck named Cody Storm. Has a bad attitude. Don't like the kid. But you know what? He stinks. I'm sure it's an easy win for you. So then that's where the PM goes to Cody, <laughs> as he just read. And then go ahead, take us through that, through what happened with that yeah, match. Yeah, so you all told me I was going to do an angle with him. And he pretty much led the entire angle. I did the video editing for a little bit of it, but he did everything because I was new. I didn't really know what I was doing. He told me, you're going to jump me on Riot, and that's going to spark a fight. And it was like only a two- or three-week angle. Um, So I jumped him. I never went to Ambition. I just started on Riot. And they said, you're going to fight in a ladder match at the pay-per-view with a contract for a job on Riot hanging above the ring. (laughs) (laughs) He said, if you grab it, you're just on riot. He said, you don't have to go to ambition. It doesn't matter. If you don't, I'm sending you to ambition. You're going to be on the bottom rung. And I, uh, you know, I looked at it and I, I was confident in myself in the game. I was like, I think I can do this. So I went for it. <laughs> and basically, oh, I <laughs> yeah, he beat, you, you kind of beat his ass, right? Yeah. I, I, was, I, was, I, I It's funny. Cause I remember one spot where like, I think you, you like Hebrew hammered him on the fucking dead ass. And I was like, Oh God, yeah. I was just watching my <laughs> dreams just shatter. Yep, no, I kicked his ass pretty bad. It was kind of yeah. Strange. So because of this, true to his word, Cross, uh, you know, didn't have a contract then. He he was done. He was, you know, he got basically yeah. So that's the other thing about OCW. Like I said, you know, you work towards, uh, you work towards the result, not oh we should trade wins, we should go back and forth, and that's like a little bit of a sidebar because I know that was a confusion. With the PS4 people where they were like, oh, you know, uh, we'll trade wins. And I yell at Dennis and I spoke to Dylan. I'm like, nah, man, you, you don't. You basically, the best you can do is the following. Like like uh, with the Cody Storm, um, you know, cross match. You know, the idea was if Cody won, he got the contract. It's not, you know, we're going to give Cross the contract and then move Cody to Ambition. It was whoever won got what they got and Cross won. So we have, you know, we change the story accordingly. So that being said, Cody did just supersede everyone and go to riot while cross stuck to his word while he could have probably um did another angle to you know make sense of him coming he just chose not to and you know thus began the genesis of cody storm so uh you get you get to riot you you passed everybody um i don't remember if there was any um like ill ill feelings towards people because i I don't know or not but as far as riot or ambition well, I guess as far as ambition, because you skipped everybody. You know, we didn't talk. I didn't know them. I didn't play with them. I didn't, like, the first guys that I played with were Brandon Hostile. Oh, God. Jacob Trance. <laughs> and KD. And Which all makes sense later. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and so, you know, looking back on it, it may have been more helpful if I'd gone to ambition, because, you know, it, it. I like these guys a lot, so I'm not going to try and shit on them, but they were awful at the game they were so bad <laughs> oh, yes god they were bad yeah and everyone they were. loves to go unbeatable matt suda the <laughs> champion that showed up and lost his debut yeah i remember that <laughs> another, see another hold on. another uh another thing also see they were, the key is they were all awful right but now years later they're most if not all will be eventually in the hall of fame yeah. because if you look on their whole fucking career they got from being awful, but good storytellers to just, you know, getting better and better. That's that's the lesson. You don't have to be the best now. You don't even have to be, be the best later. You just have to do your best, and that's the bottom line. Don't fucking trade wins. Don't you know try to oh this don't, no just fucking fight and then go from there. But yeah, they all stunk, and I yeah. remember that thing with Matt Suda because I was like, um, <laughs> I don't know if this is calling yourself unbeatable is a good I first match. Well, there goes that. <laughs> 
Yeah. So, yeah. So, no, but I think they could have helped me tell stories, and I could probably have gotten them better at the game quicker because you get better by playing people that are better. Yeah, um, and the, the, that's that's the funny thing that also makes sense because you you win the stories. Now, it, we're probably going to jump around a bit now because uh, for the remainder of your, most of your career, it was kind of uh, pretty, like, uneventful, right? Or do I you mean, have anything? It, it, it was eventful, It was, but it was anticlimactic. So, like, okay. you asked if there was resentment, and no one on Riot knew who I was, and they didn't yeah. really care. So I'm sitting here, and I remember working with Hostile. He was like, let's do a tag team. I was like, okay. He was like, but let's do this RP first to start it. And he literally wrote, he wrote an RP where I'm locked out of the locker room by the vets, <laughs> and I'm sitting there with my gym bag, on the hall in the hallway just sitting on the floor with like my head in my hands and he comes by and he opens the door for me and lets me in and that was kind of like it was cheesy it was kind of symbolic i guess a little bit but yeah because yeah, so, it plays later yeah <laughs> yeah um but there were only two big things really that happened that year and that was you i don't remember the exact storyline anymore but there was a riot where you put smythe in charge yeah and that Smythe, uh, I think KD had pissed him off. And so Smythe gave me a title shot. KD was the TV champion at the time. Mm-hmm. And he just randomly threw me into a title match. And I won. <laughs> you beat the gatekeeper. Yeah. yeah. So I randomly won a contract on Riot. I yeah. randomly got thrown into a title match and beat KD. Within the first year. Within the first month. First month, okay. Yeah. So I'm TV champion, then I fight Chris Ryder to defend the belt. I lose it immediately because uh, back in the day, there was that possum pin ability. Yeah, the possum pin. Yeah, Yeah. and so every time he tried to, I tried to grapple him, he'd reverse and it'd go into a pin, but he couldn't win off that back then, yeah. so he had to keep letting it go. So basically, he could never reverse. So anyway, we rematched it. I lost. Um, the only other big thing that happened that first year was the FI. That was year one for me. That you won was, FI uh, year one, right? Yeah, that was okay. Resolution 7, I think. 8, so, or not 8, 6. Sounds yeah. about right. Yeah, so so you had the you had the FI, and that's the first year. You had the FI. Who, who, do you remember who you fought? I don't remember. Jay, it was awful. It, was that the one with... That wasn't the one with David Jackson, was it? No, that was a later one. I wasn't part of that. Um, okay. no, was it, it was it, it six or was it four people? I think it was four, Four right? people. Yeah. And two of them were people that you told were not allowed to win. You sure? Yes. Or which that's which what two? I was told Do you was, remember? It was, I remember it was me, and the only other person I remember because he was such a strange character to me was. Do you remember? And I might not be saying it right, but Iceberg Latisse. Oh, Iceberg Latisse. Latisse. Okay. Yeah. Oh, what's that <laughs> that I don't know. I kept reading, reading his name like lettuce. It's iceberg lettuce. Yeah, but that is, is le- iceberg that's lettuce. True. But it's Latisse if you if uh, if you uh, pronounce it. Basically, what that is is a. Uh, um, it was uh, basically like a Belgian pimp character, which is a great yeah. character. But um, the thing is, you know, if you know pimp culture, they had like, you know, straight, you know, there was a pimp called Iceberg Slim. So I was like, how about if you was Iceberg and then you, you know, spell lettuce, but you put the fucking cut, you put uh, uh, in the comma and then you go Iceberg Lettuce. And then, you know, that that ran with that. Gotcha. Now, the other two, if they were told not to win, um, that see, because that kind of that's kind of contradictory to what I'm like, oh, don't. If that's the instance, it's probably because they weren't a major part of the angle and they were used as filler. So they was like, all right, well, you got your your job is, you know, since you're not really part of this, um, you know, you're going to just do the best you can. But, you know, you don't you know, you're not part of this. So you don't win. It's between those two. And, you know, that, you know, do what you got to do. Like if you want to conspire with the other guy who can win to prevent the guy who, you know, that's fine. But since you two aren't actually part of this of this thing because you were thrown in at the last minute and you garbage or whatever. The fuck, I don't remember who it was. Yeah, I don't. Because uh, I remember I don't remember if I told them not to. I remember the David Jackson one I didn't because that was specific because it was five dudes that all built the angle. And he was thrown in because of some bu- bullshit at the last minute. Mm-hmm. And I was like, look, just, you know, have fun. But you can't because obviously he did his bullshit anyway. So I remember that, yeah. So you you won that. You beat you beat Iceberg, um, and whatever, whoever else or whatever, and you got the FI. And then, if I remember correctly, there was it basically you you never you never cashed in. I had but, one opportunity. Where yeah, you had. Smythe wanted me to cash in on Mayhem, 
and uh, Smythe was Smythe was like, get him after the main event. I'm going to attack him. I'm going to lay him out. You can just pin him. That'll be the story. And I was like, I don't really want to win my first belt like that, like that, or my first world title. That's kind of awful. So yeah. I didn't do that. Any other time that I asked, I was told no. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I don't know what the point of this thing is. And, and the, to, to, to be clear, to be clear, because again, people don't don't know. Basically, what what will happen is, while it would show fucking, you know, it would sh- look like it's uh whatever. It would basically just be the thing. What the precursor was, Cody would murder Mayhem because he was really fucking good at the time. So, you know, he would they would do the match. He would beat Mayhem because he but was a better player. But we would just cut everything out and just have Mayhem dead. You know, to save time so you don't have fucking two straight matches. Got to be clear on that because people are like, oh, but isn't that contradictory to what you said? Like, no, that's mm-hmm. that's how it goes. You always play the match first and then whatever. Even with the RD thing back in the day. Anyway, so, okay, so, yeah, that didn't happen. And then you asked to to cash in a couple times and you were told no. Yeah. And then this is where I, where I chime in. I remember we finally booked you to to cash in. But I I know on our on my part I was I, I don't know maybe Pew was was GMing at the time I don't remember who was GMing but the thing was okay we'll have this for this ride next week boom we get it out the way and then prior to that though you you just you left for something and that's the first time right you left no those were different events you're thinking about it, it was twice it was twice because yeah this has happened to me three times now it's three it's three times. Kind of. Fucking one, go through I don't feel like count one, but technically it happened. It was kind of weird. Okay. Okay. So this time, and and you know, me and Kent were talking to you about this yesterday. How the yeah. rules back then were really they kind of stagnated a match. Like, yeah. They, see, that, that's the other thing. Everyone was like, "Oh, you know, we should be clear." But back in the day, we had such so so many fucking rules for micromanagement. It was just so title, everybody. Man. It was it was basically if the handbook. If you think the handbook is long, the original set of rules was actually a, a bible as opposed to a handbook it was just so long so much micromanaging and that's that was, it was like please i just and everyone's like oh, blah, 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 blah. but you know so, that, so just know that because everyone's like oh it's things are not clear but you know what? when we make things crystal clear it becomes not fun because it's just a layer and layer can i do this i don't know if i should do this oh god it says and section four of the bylines five it says that after a third straight grapple, you can't do a ground grapple, but you can do two. And it's like, no, this is really awful. But go ahead, continue. I'm sorry. Well, the main one that got me was that Tylering rule. Yeah, the Tylering. Uh, so I don't know how you all name that. My guess is that someone named Tyler really did yeah, it. Yeah, Tyler, Tyler Owanchuk. I'm sorry to cut you off. What a Tyler was back in the day um, in the earlier games is that um, you can – hold up. Sorry, I think. But if I was, okay, yeah. So what you can do is uh, basically um, in the previous games, if your strike was was fast enough, you could if someone was going to grapple you, or if even if they connected, you can punch them and break them out the grapple. So if you were good at tolering, which is unethical, you would basically just punch punch them out of uh, out of their uh, grapple every fucking att- attempt. They would go to hit you. And so anytime they tried to do any kind of move, you just punch them out, punch them out, punch them out, and it was just it looked awful because. The guy getting Tyler would just stagger backwards. So while Tyler's occurred, it was, you know, the, the way to fix it was to use slower grapples and just to be mindful of uh, of what, you know, what you're going to do. And we also I also had another um, rule that people didn't know about back when the game was, was so awful is that, um, you know, first grapple wins. Remember that one? Mm-hmm. Because the game had infinite grapples and you could just fucking no one could ever touch each other. Everyone just used yeah. quick. Everyone could only use quick, uh, quick grapples because it just. You couldn't do a heavy one at all. They had to, you know. They're impossible to get off. It was so easy to reverse. It was yeah. so that that fucking year was so rough. But uh, but yeah, okay. So continue with the Tyler. I'm sorry. Yeah. So that rule, like I always did it. And I didn't do it on purpose. And people probably thought I did. I may have a few times, but <laughs> so you would, like you said, you'd punch before they get the grapple off, and it just looked bad. So what we had to do was you had to separate. You had to back into your corners and restart. And yeah. so I'm trying to punch people to bridge the gap. I want to hit them before they hit me, but I'm not really allowed to. It just became frustrating. It made matches really uh, weird. Yeah, boring. They weren't even fun to watch or play. or They were awful. Yep. So I was frustrated I couldn't cash in. I was frustrated that playing the game seemed more like a chore uh, under those rules. And so the Fed that I started my online career with 
GWA was trying to make a comeback. And I was like, well, I'm not really having fun here. I'm not really getting to do what I thought I was going to do. I'm going to go back and help all my all the guys that I used to know build this thing. I became like an admin um, yeah. for them. And so that's when you took my FI from me, which obviously you had to. I was gone. And I don't know if you want to tell that story or if you want me to. Was, was that the one? Which one was that? Was that a... Uh, no. Okay. Uh, wait, so, all right. So, oh, I, I get him confused. Oh, so if it's Paddle, so did, did he... Did he, was that the one where he was the glass or was that the, yes. the, the okay so now now put yourself in my position you are uh you are the owner of the best place on the fucking planet earth because that's that's what i say i don't care mm-hmm. and you know you gave this fucking punk kid the goddamn future investment i mean you know you, you put him in line for it you, 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 hey kid you win this you get a shot at the title you book the match for the fucking belt and this guy, you know, granted he doesn't know, but fuck him because you, you you be a good worker and you'll see it the next week. I don't gotta fucking tell you anything. You you see it and you go, okay, good. I'm the goddamn boss, all right. Mm. And then, uh, you know, he just did. Did you tell me you just left? I don't remember. Um, I think I told you. I I didn't give you a ton of advance notice. I was just like, man, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm like, yeah, I, I, I was I was just like, all right, whatever, dude. Because I was also I was also like, I don't like you. You stink. Right. So I was like, all right, whatever, dude. So basically, all right, so he's gone. So now in my position, if you were me, you know, you, all this, all this happened and you're like, I, I, he had, it's, it, his, his belt is, his, you know, his match is next week. This motherfucker. So what I do is I took uh, Paloma, which yeah, I don't know is, most people don't know is basically just from ambition. Well, now he's, he's actually on right now. It's just this 450 pound Samoan motherfucker. Yeah. Basically, uh, he, he fights Cody. Uh, basically in the um, that's the glass, right? You said that was the glass. You yeah, you yeah, okay, yeah. Well, the, it was the glass and the dumpster. No, but uh, the glass was first, I think. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the glass was first. Yeah. So basically, uh, when you had story editor, you can actually there was a scene where you can throw a guy through a fucking window. So I just had this 400 pounds of Moen through <laughs> going through a fucking window, <laughs> murder him and take his F5, 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 F, uh, his future investment, and then Paddle became the future investment guy because it's like, hey, what can I fucking do? I already, you know. And at mm-hmm. this point in time, Paddle was actually, you know, building momentum, and it's like, fuck it, they, you know, might as well, you know, give it to him because, they, you know, you know, he if if I give it to him, he's someone who can actually compete, and it's fuck it, there you go, it's a gift. So he wins FI, Cody's gone, Paddle goes on to, I don't remember who he beats, but he does go on to become a uh, champion. Harry, and maybe? did he? I think it might have been Aries or maybe Leon. Yeah. I don't remember specifically. I shouldn't know since I wasn't actually here. Yeah, you wouldn't know, and you can't can't expect me to know well, anything I anymore. Think it was Aries. Either or, he, he probably beat the legendary, the legend Leon Hart. Either or, I'm not sure which, but um. Leon managed him. Actually. Yeah, there you go. Okay, that makes sense. So, in in the greatest twist of irony, the day that Pato becomes the uh, the world champion on Riot, or the, actually the OCW world champion, you guys remember unbeatable Matsuda who got beat <laughs> his first match. So we have a match with Matsuda and Pato. I don't remember if it's Riot or Ambition. I think it might have been for Riot. First match uh, Pato has is against Unbeatable, who got beaten Matsuda. <laughs> Matsuda proceeds. And again, look, I want to make this clear. Competition is I, – I, I want competition first and foremost. I do. But I also want people to use – I don't know, a little bit of common sense. So on the, the first fucking – World champion Paddle versus Matsuda. Matsuda proceeds to tap out the world champion. <laughs> now, they don't know Matsuda. Maybe some people don't, but Paddle is like fucking 6'4, 450 pounds. Matsuda is like 150 pounds soaking wet. So he much. fucking t- he tapped out the world champion. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> I was so fucking pissed. I was pissed at everybody. I was pissed at Battle for letting it happen. I was pissed. For, I'm like, you, you can. It's I'm fine. You won, but why the you, you can. Oh my god, you just. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, but hey, you want competition? You got it. So I, I need to shut the fuck up. So yeah, so he did that, and then uh, you were gone for a while. So let's well, let's. You, you also. This is also when you threw me in the dumpster. No, no, no. That. Yeah. that the dumpster. No, that's the second time though. That's that's what I'm saying. No, they were the same thing. The second time is when you made me fight Trance twice. 
in the same week. I'm pretty sure that the dumpster, the dumpster and the glass are two different occasions. Because mm-hmm, that's the only time that I left. Uh, that's the only time that I left with ill will. The other time oh, I left because I had to. But, yeah, you had to, but did oh, so that's okay. That actually, yeah, you did the same thing. You had Pato throw me through a window, and then you dumped me into a an industrial sized dumpster <laughs> with wheels on it, and you and Pato rolled me out into the busy streets of New York City, <laughs> where presumably I got hit by dozens of. Men. And it's really a testament that I'm still alive. You you know what? That that's the funny part because <laughs> they someone say, "Hey, did you just see what happened?" You're like, "No, no, yeah." I think it was Trance. Trance is like, "So do you know what they did to you?" Because Trance was one that was also kind of annoyed with the rules, so he was moonlighting in GWA. Well, that motherfucker. So he and I know were that. still talking a little bit. Piece of shit. Piece and so, Pants. yeah, he was like, "Yo, Jay threw you in a dumpster. He literally threw you in the trash." And I was like, "What are you talking about? I'm not even there." <laughs> Yeah, so he was thrown in a dumpster, and uh, he presumably hit by many cars. I don't know. I, I, I'll, I'll be honest. And when the dumpster was put outside, uh, we just closed the gate. Uh, I don't believe. I don't believe there was any malice. I don't believe I shoved it down the block. Maybe I did. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to think. I think I may have shoved it. I may have shoved the dumpster down the hill. And if whatever happened happened, there was no. Do you hear cars crashing or nothing? Nothing. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, so so that happened, and again, that happened. from my okay. position, it makes perfect sense. It does, and I don't, you know, I kind of laughed at it. I was a little upset at first, and then I thought it was really funny. Hey, it was and your last like, day. Oh, I left. <laughs> so, I yeah. <laughs> okay, so fa- a fast forward. A fast forward to 2012, I think, uh, or early 2013. It was summer. I remember that. So and, uh, why did you come back? Because Jacob asked me to. Oh, of course he did, son of a bitch. <laughs> he asked me to come back, and I don't know if we're allowed to say his name, so I'll say Hairline instead. Uh, we jumped him. He asked me to come back, form a tag team, we'll jump him. Okay. So, okay, so we did that. Uh, we didn't last too long as a tag team, because my friend, who I had been tag teaming with for the majority of the last four years, had decided he wanted to join OCW with me. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jake Storm. Okay. It's his ring name. Yeah. So he he was like, yo, I want to play. But let's tag team. And I was like, listen, Jacob, I'm sorry, but I've been teaming with him for four years. I got a team with him. So uh, we, I turned on Jacob. We threw him out of the ring or whatever. I think I power bombed him. Yeah, I um, remember. I actually remember that. Yeah. Yeah. So Jake and I go and try to take on the A team. No. <laughs> is Padalo Mai's alt, Omar Gibbs, yeah. and Tiberius Dupree's alt, Mez Murdoch. And they are just really starting to become this dominant force in the tag team. Um, yeah, so they're just Jake, fucking beasts, yeah. Jake didn't have a computer at the time, so he couldn't write. So he got really frustrated, and he flaked on me. <laughs> like, we have a title match set up for the pay-per-view, and he just doesn't show up. Yeah, I'm, like, uh, I'm left holding the bag. So I decide to play against the A team two on one and try to win. Um, and it actually went pretty well, but I kept kicking out of their finishers and it looked like a terrible match. So it just got scrubbed from the card. It ran like a half hour. I made their finishers look bad. I ended up losing anyway. So they were like, let's just not air it. So it never aired. OK, I think I vaguely, vaguely remember that. Yeah. And so the next big, I can't remember if Cerberus came first or if the live riot came first. I think Cerberus came first. So Sean and I, this is the winner of that same year. Sean and I are getting to be friends and we're getting really annoyed, you know, because from my perspective, I came back and I'm watching guys like um, Dupree and Dimsmore and they're doing great. And I'm like, how the hell did this happen? <laughs> awful right they're still awful i mean granted kent had beaten me since then with simon divine in another place but uh, i was like these guys suck so how am i getting back here and i'm watching the resolution main event is dimsmore versus tiberius dupree for both the international title i think it was international at the time and the world title and i'm like that doesn't how did they go from ambition to taking over in like a year 
Is it, it, I think it's a little longer than a year, but you yeah, might be right. It was a little bit longer, but it, it blew my mind. I was like, that can't be right. <laughs> that can't, this doesn't make any sense. Right. And so. Fucking hard work. How dare you? <laughs> how dare I'm sitting here and I'm winning matches. I'm winning matches. I'm winning matches. But no one likes my stories, which I get now, but I didn't really get back then. I didn't understand. You, you were so hard at it. I was yeah. like, this is a competitive fed. I'm winning. Why am I not moving up? And. <laughs> Yeah. And this so, is a good story. Because, okay, keep on. Um, so basically, Sean and I, I remember we just kept sitting there and we were like, you know, this is bullshit. It's the same <laughs> four or five guys getting all the world title shots and they're all friends and they're all, you know, they're all wrestling each other repeatedly. And it's like you'll see the same two guys fight a three or four month angle when I'm sitting here killing everybody and I'm not getting anything. And Grant, that was my attitude at the time. I don't yeah. necessarily. No, I know you got to you gotta specify because I don't want people to have like like what you say who. Right. <laughs> Just, okay. So it gets better because as as time progresses, there's some nuances. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So Sean and I, uh, Leon talks us into joining Sean McGee as a group. Yeah. Uh, Cerberus, and so we joined together. It was an angle where KD, Sean, and I just wanted something to do for for a pay per view. We had nothing. And we were three friends, and we decided we worked well together, even though no one else liked it, and no one else wanted to work with a lot of us. So we were like, fuck it, let's do it together. So it was Chill Factor, and leading up to the pay-per-view, each week one of us got attacked backstage, but no one knew by whom. Right? So it ends in a triple threat because it's basically a round robin, like we all suspected it was the other guy. Yeah. So we fight a triple threat. And in the end, Sean knocks KD out with his finisher while I'm just standing there. And this isn't, like, storyline. This is an agreement between Sean and I, but KD had no idea what was going on. <laughs> oh, no! So, Sean hits his finisher and pins him while I'm just standing there watching and taunting. And KD is like, uh... And KD's our friend, so he didn't really care that much, because KD will put you over if he likes you. Um... Yeah, so, ba- basically means like if he loses, he's not gonna fucking make us think about it. Right, Katie is a good guy as much shit as we all give him. I um, like Katie. Gotta mention that. Yeah. Uh, so after again, the- he, he, again, wait, hold on. Gotta be clear because again, you know, just for the sake of clarity, when I say Katie loses, I mean like if Katie gets beaten in a match, he, you know, yeah. as long as it's a good match, he's not gonna call you a sissy or fucking you know demand to fight you the next week and murder you. So continue, Cody. Right. So after the match, Sean and I. A video plays and it reveals that it's Sean and I that were actually beating up KD every time that he got hurt. And any time that it was Sean and I, we were faking it. <laughs> yeah, I remember and that. And so it shows us beating him up backstage, tossing him through gl- windshields on cars and stuff. Um, yeah, I remember that. So we hit him with the concerto. There was that storyline scene back then. Yeah, I missed that So one. we do that. And then Leon comes out. Surprise return. Uh, one of many. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> He comes out and he raises our hands up and we become Cerberus. Yes, the three-headed doggy ding. Right, that thing. Yeah. Uh, okay, so our first main feud that I remember is... And this is... Pew and I at this point have very different takes on how this happened. <laughs> and I'm not even sure who's right anymore. Like, it's one of those things where you're they're so convinced they're right that you start doubting yourself. But I think I'm right. Okay. So we'll get your story. I, I didn't know there was a few th- a segue, but I can't for this part. Uh, sure. The international title. Okay. So Pew is the hardcore champion. This is during that historically long reign that he had. Yes. And Tyro is the international. Wait, champion. let me let me just let me stop for a second. So 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 more history lesson. If you didn't know, um, <clears throat> pardon me. Pew held the hardcore championship for, if I'm not mistaken, 310 days. Yeah. Uh, for a total of 14 defenses, and on the 15th, I believe he lost. I don't remember. He lost to, to Gibbs, right? Yeah, it was Gibbs. Gibbs yeah. power bombed him on stairs. Yeah, power bombed <laughs> him on stairs, and then there goes your fucking rain, hoot. Yeah. So you know, just just to, you know, the the overarching thing is that in, in OCW, if you want instant satisfaction, you're fucking in the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So okay. So I'm sorry. Continue what you were saying. No. Okay. So Pew's the hardcore champion. Mm-hmm. Tyro is the international champion. He's also on a tear, but not nowhere yeah. as long. Maybe not yeah. nearly as like that. But <laughs> he's on a tear, and so they're feuding, and I don't remember why, but. So Leon kind of finagles his way in there. He's like, yo, you, you all should do something with my boys here. <laughs> and 
for whatever stupid reason. You gotta do it in his, in his voice. Oh yeah, you guys got, <laughs> you guys got, you know, Pew, pew and, and Tyra, you guys are really, really cerberus in, in, in your little yeah. view. Okay, continue, I'm sorry. Because they were both, they were both faces at the time, so they were kind of yeah. looking to add heels to it, I think. And I think they kind of looked at us and went, well, we can kick their ass anyway, so we don't really have to worry about losing. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so the way that it went was we had a tag match the week before, I believe it was Certified Greatness. Okay. Um, and it was Sean and I versus them. So the uneasy tag team versus the heel stable. Yeah. And the rule was whoever lost, whoever was pinned, if one of their two guys was pinned, they had to put their title on the line in a fatal four way, in an elimination fatal four way, the pay per view. Yes, I remember that. If one of us lost, we just we were out of the equation. We lost our shot. They were going to fight in a singles face first face best man match. Yeah. And so we ended up winning. I don't remember how it went exactly, but we pinned Tyro. So the international title is on the line at the pay-per-view. Yes. So we get to the pay-per-view, and they really acted like uneasy allies. Like, you can tell that Pew is sitting here, and he's like, "I'm ba- we're basically fighting a tag team. It's basically a one-on-one-on-two match. <laughs> yeah. And and I just remember Pew being like, why are we not working together? And Tyro just, like, running around the ring fighting everyone like he couldn't <laughs> give two fucks, even though it was his title on the line. <laughs> That's Tyro. Yeah. <laughs> he just wanted it to be a good show. So, oh, God. So it's basically, I basically told Sean, I was like, Pew is probably, if not the best in this match, the second best, because, you know, I had a very big ego. Of course you did. Huge. Disgusting. So that. I said, you just... Take Tyro over there, and you keep him out of my way, and I'm going to beat up Pew. <laughs> and so I, I'm going to get him out of the match, and then we're going we're gonna to go two-on-one with the weaker link. Yeah. Um, and, you know, if I'm in trouble, come over, knock Pew out, I'll get back up, and we'll get back on it. I love it. <laughs> so we end up doing that. I eliminate Pew. Uh then Sean and I start fighting Tyro. He's screwed, right? Because it's two-on-one. There's yeah. really nothing he can do because we're going to break pins on each other if we have to. It doesn't yeah. matter to me. So we eliminate Tyro, and then I immediately, pretty much immediately, Sean and I go to our separate corners, but he thinks that I, like, backstabbed him a little bit here. <laughs> I immediately hit him with the Hebrew hand. Yeah, I remember that it was fucking instant. <laughs> I was like, there's a title in my <laughs> sight. I'm going to fucking take it. Peace out. <laughs> I, I fulfilled my part of the agreement. We were the last two oh, to die. I remember that because it was mad quick. Yeah. <laughs> it was so Match was like a 25-minute match, but the final two was like 30 seconds. Yeah, you just cracked him in the mouth. Yeah. So then you so, become what, international, right? Yeah, I win the title, but Sean and I are cool. Cerberus keeps going. Um, so I won. You. We did a live riot. Yeah. And for the main event, you wanted an elimination chamber. It sounds about right. So you, <laughs> you were making you wait, were wait, hold on, hold on. Let me cut you off of that. But but didn't you also win King of OCW? That's later. God damn. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we already had thirty seven minutes. Go ahead. Keep yeah, on. I know. I'll try and go fast. That's so fine. You, yeah, whatever. Do you? I don't care. You people. told someone. You told like one of the main eventers. I don't even remember who the world champ was at the time. But you told them all. You just told people make make an elimination chamber. We're gonna have some fun uh, while we're streaming. And so they did. And they it was like first come first serve to get into it. And you said before the match started, you said uh, whoever wins this, I'm gonna give a world title shot to. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought well, you were they will haunt me forever. I swore you were joking, but you kept saying, I'm serious, I'm serious, and then I won it. <laughs> and I, I was like the first person in it. I went through the entire match, and I won. Uh, <laughs> and so I was like, cool, I'm international champion, and I'm going to get a world title shot. This is fantastic. This is, and great. This is great. It's great. Yeah, it's great. It's great. <laughs> and so that never happened. <laughs> He's joking. He didn't really mean it. You're international champion. Just keep going with that. That's not happening. You're not good enough at stories. And I was like, you fuckers, you <laughs> got to be joking. I just win and win and win, and you tell me to sit down. And All I do is win. Yeah. So the King OCW was you were feuding Parker. Yes. And 
Parker kept beating everyone that you threw at him. Yes, this is also true because fucking so Parker. You said right yeah. I need to find a contender that actually has a shot in storyline, and you said whoever wins the King of OCW this time will not only be the king, they're going to get a future world title shot. So to be fair, so you actually, so you actually, okay, continue. I'm sorry. Yeah. So Trance and I had been feuding, and Trance and I are like long line, long career rivals at this point because of the yeah. tag team thing and other stuff. So Trance and I are feuding. It's the finals were me, Pew, Tobin, and uh, and Trance, and it just so happens that Trance is already the number one contender to my international title. Yes. So. Uh, the semifinals and the finals happened on the same card. It was the pay-per-view. And Pew gets beat by Trance, and I beat Tobin. So then Trance and I fight, and I win. So I'm the king of OCW and the international champion, but I still have to deal... I still have to defend my title against Trance separately because that was not his title match. Yeah. <laughs> so we decide to, to build up to resolution that year for the title match. And uh, we did Hell in a Cell because I was doing the whole Son of God gimmick, so he decided he was going to be the anti-saint. Yeah, I remember and, that too. Uh, or the anti-Christ. And, uh, so the first we, inklings of uh, what you call it, of uh, the, the family. family. The family yeah, guy, yeah. It really was. It was kind of cool. Um, so we decided to do a Hell in a Cell match with the stipulation that you had to go through the cell before uh, before you could win. Someone yeah. had to go through the cell before the match could end. So we do that. I win. Before this <laughs> happened, I told you that I I got in touch with some long lost family. My sisters, a lot of you know about. Yeah, we'll, we'll just we'll just say that it's some IRL stuff happening. You know, go so that I was stuff. gonna go away for the summer. I was gonna take my summer break and stay somewhere for three months yeah. with the internet. And I told you that, and you said, "Okay, that's fine. Just defend your match at Lucian. We'll it'll be fine." And so I did. And then you were like, "Well, you won." And you're just going to take the title and leave? And I was like, well, I, I won. So, yeah, I, I am. And you were like, no. You said, that's not really right. We're going to, I'm going to, you got one more chance to lose it. You said, I'm going to book you for Riot. Make sure you do it before you go. You're going to defend against Trance again. So I did. And I beat him. And you were like, you've got to be fucking joking. You're going to take the title and leave. So you. I, I don't think I said that. No, you were annoyed, but you also, you would, you and I were going to work together when I came back. You gave me a pink slip and you were like, this will give you a story when you get back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you fired me. Trance made a, there was a vacant title and I remember you and Trance made a fake title and eventually he wins and he and Sean feud for a while. But so I'm gone. Yeah, you're gone. I come back and I'm asking you, I'm like, so are we doing something? And you're busy. I think you were working with Tibby at the time. Yeah, I think we became uh, super best friends. Yeah, so you were like, I don't really have time for you. And I was like, <laughs> don't you, you make it seem like a, <laughs> such a dick. You were like, I don't like what uh, you do my voice. Line. You're like, I can't believe you won. How dare you? No, don't, just be like, oh, okay, fuck. Okay. <laughs> don't, don't say it like that, you dick. No, I'm, I'm looking through storm colored glasses here. That's how I was looking at it. At the time. Bitch. You're like, I don't yeah. have time. So you were like, you know, I'm busy. You got to do something else. So I'm like, uh, so Cerberus is still kind of going, but Leon and I are trying to be faces. Yeah, Leon's yeah. like, why don't you come back? And surprise attack the A-team with me, and we'll take them on for the tag titles. So that was at Summerside. So we do that. That's for, which year? Summerside? Uh, 20... 11 or 13? No, 12, 13? No, it, 13. it's 13 or 14. I think 13. Probably 13 sounds more accurate. Yeah. That's where, if you all look at Leon Hart's sig, I'm getting booted in the face. That, <laughs> that's, 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 <laughs> that's the one you got booted yeah, in the face! Kind of, because I'm sitting there, I grab... Nope. <laughs> no mess. No. Mess. I'm sitting there. I'm talking to Kent during the match, and I grab the ref, and I accidentally grab the ref, and I know it does that animation where you argue with the ref because you touched him and he gets pissed at you, and you can't move or reverse. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm looking at Kent, and I see you as a finisher. I'm like, Kent, Kent, you don't want to kick me. Kent, don't kick me. Kent, this isn't fair. Don't kick me. And he kicks me. And he pin, he he goes to pin me, and Leon's dumbass is on the apron and can't fucking figure out how to get into the ring to break the pin. 
Oh my god, I was so angry because I'm still super thirsty at that point. Yes. I'm so pissed. I so started thirsty. throwing things in my dorm room. Yes. Oh, I was so angry. So thirsty. Yeah, you still the thirst. Yeah, the <laughs> thirst. Plays into, we played into okay. some shit. So we lose that, and, <laughs> and so I got really frustrated. But then I start fighting again. I remember you booked me against KD again because you were like you came back and you got to fight him again. So I did, and I beat him. <laughs> It's like the third time. Every time I'd come back from hiatus, you'd be like, I don't like you anymore, or I never did. Maybe that was the case. Fight KB and get your ass kicked, and then I beat him. Yeah, you kept beating him. I was like, God damn it! Yeah. The gatekeeper, yep. I just took the door. Oh, my God. Um, you paid to me to be him. I don't like how, you, <laughs> I don't like how I'm being portrayed in this scenario. Yeah, with it, it'll be fine. Good. Um, <laughs> So that happens, and I start going on a roll. Of course, I don't have my title anymore, and I never got a rematch. We just kind of dumped that. Um, so I'm like, well, I was the international champion. I never lost it. I was the king of OCW. I have a world title shot coming. If I just win some matches and talk about it a lot, maybe he'll give it to me. Maybe. And that <laughs> apparently was not the case. Uh, people got very upset that I was talking about it so much instead of actually doing a story because basically I was just coming out every week and going, I'm the king, give me my title shot. Yeah, pretty much. Instead and everyone of- was like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> cares, slim, slim, thirst bucket. Yeah. And so I'm like, well, this is some real bullshit. I'm main event level over here. And you're like, you want to fucking bet? So you match me up against uh, against Tibby and Parker. Yeah. And Wait, was it two on one? No, 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 no. In separate weeks. Okay. And they fight me. And they were good matches, but I lost them both. So basically you're yeah. like, eh. Are you scratching something? Uh, Not intentionally, maybe. Uh, I hear something. I hear like, anyway. So yeah, so you lost both of them back to back. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, oh, you know what? I'm telling this out of order. That was before the King of OCW is where that was. Oh, you got you, dude. Because the idea is that you, you tell me. things in order. <laughs> yeah, I should tell things in order. That was before King of OCW because Parker whipped my ass. Like I've never lost like that before. <laughs> I think he might have been single yellow. <laughs> he <laughs> obliterated me. And I was sitting there going, man, I have the big king of the ring. You know, I got king of OCW coming up, and I fucking suck. Yeah, that so, sounds familiar, though. Yeah. I kind of remember a beating you took. He beat the shit out of me on, like, that Wednesday or something like that. And so I'm like, I got to uh. play these matches on Friday. <laughs> so between Wednesday and Friday, I played for, like, literally 15 hours. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm going to win. So I win, and so... <laughs> So thank you, Parker. I I do appreciate that. Oh yeah, he beat the uh, fuck out of you, and you're like, I'm going to win this. <laughs> yeah, I was like, well, I can't. I lost to the main event guys when I said I was main event level. I have to do something. So I I I kept playing until I got better. Um, <laughs> slim, slim. Yeah. Okay, so now we're back later, and I'm back, and you all just kept telling me to stop talking about this title shot. And I was like, well, I really don't know what else to do because I was going to work with you. That fell through. I was going to work with Leon and the A-team, but after we lost, uh, prior to him coming back recently and attacking Smythe, that was the last time we saw Leon. Yeah. And, <laughs> and he, took so, one of his, he took one of his breaks. Yeah, so Leon and I fell through. So I was like, well, guys, I don't really know what you want me to do. And this is where I kept looking at everyone running these long two- or three-month feuds. Yeah, there was, like, no, there was no room for you anyway. I'm like, there's really there's no one for me to work with. You all don't want to see me versus KD again. You've told me that. <laughs> so I'm just sitting here. And the whole time they're telling me this is because people don't like you. Yeah. They don't stop what they're doing and work with you or find a way to fit you in and i'm like well fuck you're really not giving me much of a choice here so i just kept talking about it and kept talking about it and talking about it and talking about it but didn't but didn't leon wasn't leon the one who 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 basically you told me that he aimed you and started crying to yeah you. yeah so basically so this is what happened so so after you know cody is ah oh, oh, i want this and i'm like <laughs> Go away. There's no room for you. Because it really wasn't. There was no, you know, everybody was doing stuff. Yeah. So then I get a PM from Leon and in Leon's summation. Oh, you, you said that, you know, you told, you told, you told Cody that if he, <laughs> if he, if he wouldn't kick it, kick, kick it, oh, she tell you, you, you make a, you give him a toe shot and you didn't, do, you didn't do that. And then, right, right, we had low, well, right, you, you said if he won, 
you know, whoever won would be champ to have a champ for the championship. And he won, but you didn't do anything about it. So like, 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 it would be really nice if, if you know you 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 you, you talk about your work and, and like you made the match happen. So I was like, oh my god, just shut the fuck up. Fine, 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 fine. Well, you kept telling me that you didn't even remember it happened. Yeah, you know, I like, did. That was just the king of OCW. You didn't win a title shot. I had to go back <laughs> and find the RP that you did that told the, <laughs> that said that the winner would get a title shot you because did. you wanted to deal with Parker. You did. But yeah, but to, to be fair, it was, I, I legitimately didn't remember. It wasn't right. like, fuck you, go. I was like, I, I did. I was, I was like, I was like, show me. Show me if I said it. And you're like, Dring. I was like, oh, well, fuck. Okay, here you go. Yeah. So at this point, Parker's not even champion anymore. It's Pew. Yeah, it's Pew. Oh, that's great. Yeah, go, go ahead. Finish it. Finish it. Um, <laughs> keep keep going because it gets worse before it gets better. I mean, it doesn't get that much. Oh, well, yeah, I guess it gets worse. Oh, it uh, gets much worse. It gets much worse. <laughs> so people are just, you know, they're pissed. They don't like me. They don't think that I'm storyline enough. People kept telling me you can't carry a story. You don't have a track record of writing engaging content. You're you're gonna be a shitty champion, so we'd really rather not give you the title shot. <laughs> but I talked about it enough to where you all were finally like, Fine, fuck, but you're not getting a storyline out of this. We're gonna have the world champion beat you <laughs> and then you're gonna go on your merry way and do whatever the fuck you do. And I was like <laughs> oh, man, I was so, so angry and people were so adamant that if i won the title it was going to be the end of ocw which i didn't (laughs) understand like maybe the world title scene would have sucked but i don't know why everyone would have just quit or stopped playing i don't know they were like the world champion is going to be a worse storyteller than the low card and it's going to be awful oh man if you if you you know pew you know what was in store just just ratchet up like a thousand yeah yeah, so at one point, I was like, well, if you all hate it that bad, just take the title shot back. I don't, like, fine, just, I, fine. Yeah, and but at which point, like, no, 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 don't say you all, I was like, no, Well, I happened because I'm a man of my word. It, yes, you said, no, you're going to get it. Uh, you actually convinced me not to give it up at one point. Yeah, see, I'm not a prick, motherfuckers. Right. <laughs> so I was I, like, you okay. earned this kid, you earned it, pal. But what you <laughs> this did is just not going to be on the pay-per-view. Is that you can't force anyone to work a story with me because he was out. Pew and I think Tibby were working a story. I think they were, yeah. So you were like, you know, you're going to get a random riot title shot. You're not going to get a pay per view. There's going to be really no build up other than you having run your mouth for six months. Yeah. And I was like, okay. That's fine. So <laughs> Pew being Pew, he's like, I play mind games. That's what I do. He comes to the ring. For our match in, and this was back when you could actually watch entrances first. Yeah. He's in all black. Pew wrestles in trunks. You all have seen him. Yeah, he, he wrestles all, you know, a bunch of yeah. colors in your trunks. But whatever. This, he put on a fucking all black singlet, which was what I was wearing at the time. Not all black, but I was wearing a singlet, and he was trying to take a dig at me. And he was wearing, like, black gym shorts with it or something just to make it look silly. <laughs> He just went all black garbage of time because you're, to, cause you're was, a bum. Yeah, he was trying to get under my skin, hoping it was going to throw me off my game. Or maybe he just thought it was funny and it was to make him laugh. Sometimes I don't really know with him. Um, <laughs> so really, it just pissed me off. And I typically play better when I'm angry. So I slam slammed him all over the ring and I got I won the title. And so now everyone's, well, like, now what do we do? <laughs> the World Championship had a story going for it. Now we just switched hands, and we don't know what we're doing. But they wanted to keep going with their story, and they wanted nothing to do with me. That yep. Part of the story. Yep. Was this, was this before or after Tibby blocked you on on chat? Well, that had nothing to do oh. with OCW. That was... Just you talking too much. Yeah, that was just, I... You know me, yeah. I... No, well, not I, now. It's funny because I told you to shut the fuck up, and he didn't, and you, you, you're fine now. But before, yeah, just, I literally I shut, told the, him fuck to shut the fuck up, and I was joking. It, Ken, there was something you were saying that day from like a movie or a show, and you just kept repeating it, and you said it like twenty times. And I was mainly joking, but I was kind of serious. And I went, "Just shut the fuck up," and. He got so angry, he muted and blocked me for like a year. I honestly thought that he blocked you just because you talked too much, but no, I know. Okay, no, so yeah. I yelled at him, so, and I deserved it. I was being an asshole, yeah, but so yeah. It's so so you so you won, and now and now, and now the no death, one wants to work the, with the, me. Death, the death clock on OCW begins. Right. 
it, yeah, the Doomsday Clock is at eleven fifty nine, right? So like like you, once you won, I proceeded to trash my dorm room, and when I say dorm room, I mean my bedroom. <laughs> Just throwing shit everywhere. Just so fun. And I didn't care. I was like, well, I'll make this work. I'll just give him some new music and some new attire. Nope. Go ahead, continue. No, but we did. We I kept the attire. Okay. I, I wrestled I, the attire for a while, and Matsuda was super helpful. Oh, yeah, yeah, he was. He was happy. Yeah, he, uh, he completely redid my call. He's like, it's good to see that we have a champion that's actually, that's not just story, because we, leading up to it, to keep their story going, they had done so many cutscene endings that I wasn't sure if they were actually playing the matches legit or not. Yeah. So that was frustrating to me. I was like, well, you should have a definitive answer by now. But you don't. And I'm sitting here waiting for my title shot, and y'all are taking your sweet-ass time. Yeah, see, that's uh, that's why, again, why I say just, you know, do the match first and then try to find that balance between, you know, cutscenery. Well, now it's harder, so people don't do it. Yeah. Between cut scenery and just, you know, your actual competitive match. You were actually probably one of the more competitive players. You were just thirsty and slammy slammy, so right. no one liked you. So yeah. So Suda but, yeah, so yeah. Suda remade my attire and I made an attire and I did use her slurpy idea, the thirst. Yeah, the thirst. For the shirt. <laughs> so I kept the attire. It. it was the song that I didn't keep. Yeah. Because I was so attached to the one that I had. Uh the Queen remix. Yeah, yeah. Actually in, in hindsight, the Queen remix is actually really fucking good. I, I mean, it's literally, I want, I want it, it all, yeah. I was and, I want, and I want it now. Yeah, that was exactly <laughs> Right now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It was like I was talking, yeah. I don't even remember the one I gave you, the one I you I gave me, so uh, All Me by Drake. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, Which yeah, yeah. I liked, but a lot of people were like, this is shit, and so I was like, well, they already hate me in my storylines, <laughs> I ought to give them at least a theme song. I remember there was a desk that you all did, and Parker did with you. Yeah. And he said, literally, the only thing I like about him is his theme song. <laughs> And I thought it was hysterical. I was cracking up. It was actually the desk that I did after I won the title. You started it with my theme song. Yeah. And you were like, "That's the." He said, "That's the only thing about him I like. That's a good song." Oh god, the Queen song. Yeah. Yeah. Oh god. Yeah, I remember. Oh my god. Yeah. So I kept the Queen song. So so, no one wanted to work with me. So I had you telling me no one wanted to work with me. Parker telling me that. Bobby Minio telling me that. And I'm like, dude, how about you want a match first before you say anything? (laughs) Because I had that whole argument with him. Do you remember that? I don't remember the argument. He kept fighting Suda. Yes. And I was like, dude, you fought Matsuda for two or three months in a row now, and you just keep losing. And I, I, I there's just no, I can't watch it anymore because you're getting your ass kicked. <laughs> and it's just boring. And he's like, well, I can't help that my mic work is so good, but my ring skills are terrible. I was like, well, I can't help that your ring skills are terrible. <laughs> like, there's no point in me watching this 20-minute match if I know Matsuda's going to win. And that's basically the story of Matsuda's title reign, the whole damn thing. <laughs> but... But yeah, so Bobby kept telling. Bobby was the biggest arguer of the whole thing. I remember because he, because he just talks so much. He's like me; he talks forever. Yeah. And so he's really good. He's really fucking good at it. Yeah, he he's is a really good argue. He he basically does. Whenever I get angry and want to say something, and it just comes out like "fuck you, stupid, you fucking banana nut dick," he'll say like what I need to say, and I'm like, "Thank you, Bobby. Yes. Thank, thank, thank you, Bobby. Thank you. That's yeah. exactly what I wanted to say, but you said it more eloquently, me, Bobby. Thank you, thank you. Okay, continue." <laughs> so yeah, he and I had a fundamental misunderstanding, basically. But so everyone's saying, you know, we we don't really want to work with you. Uh, find someone who will. So thank God, Tobin did. Wait, yeah. before Tobin, you actually fought KD for the world title. We were putting something together, but we resolution was two pay-per-views forward, so we were like, let's assume that you hold the title until then, and let's work until then. Yeah, but you fought KD before. You fought, you right, fought I did. Yeah. I fought him before uh, Road to Glory, I guess. That's yeah. what for it. It so, comes full circle, because you're once again fighting KD for yeah, the world. Yeah, because no one wanted to work with me, Just and KD is always title. talking about how he beats the crap out of everybody, but never gets a title shot, and I was like, well, I'm a fighting champion, and no one wants to work with me anyway, so fight me. Fine. <laughs> you beat him again? Yeah, I beat him again. <laughs> um, you know, there is one match, that K- KD and I have had like five singles matches in our OCW careers against each other, yeah. and he beat me once, and it was a filler match, 
and I ended up getting the original match done, and so that match never saw the light of day. Oh, well. <laughs> so KD has never officially beaten me in an OCW ring, and I, I feel like an asshole for that one match. Well, there, there, there's a potential storyline down the line if you can actually finally yeah. do it. But yeah, okay. So, so, so I beat him, and Token go. wants to work with me, but no one else does. So I'm like, I got to... I got to fix that. I had to work with people, you know, I can't, I'm not interesting as a character myself is what I keep being told. So I need to bring in other characters. So I bring in my friends from GWA, uh, the blacklist, Johnny D and Wheeler. And <laughs> the best part about me. that, huh? The best part about that. Everybody likes them, oh. but not you. <laughs> Everyone loved them. They were such nice guys. They played much less thirsty than I did. Yep. And they were good writers. Their characters were interesting. So they, they took up the mantle, the blacklist, because their whole gimmick was OCW thinks it's better than us. We're not even allowed to be here. The only reason we can be here is because our friend is the champion and is opening the door. Yeah. So we form a group. We jump Tobin. Um, that was my first real feud with the title, because Katie and I did you know some writing, but nothing all that memorable which is basically the point people were trying to make to yeah, me viewed. um so we jump they i decide to tobin and i have a singles match on riot after that pay-per-view where i fought katie and we play it but we storyline the ending so that they jump him and i get disqualified and they put him through the announce table yada 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 it starts a match we go down the line a couple weeks and Tobin Frost has this mentor, Sam. I don't remember his last name or if he even had a last name. He's his father figure. He's known him since he was a boy. He trained him, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so Cody Storm and the Blacklist kidnap Sam. <laughs> because Tobin was trying to give his character a bit of an edge. He had been working with Trance. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so they were trying to give him an edge, and so... To give him that edge, we had him abduct my mother in return. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I remember that. And so it was basically like, you know, give me back Sam. But really what he what he made her do was tell me that I was not the son of God. That my father was actually a human. Surprise, surprise. Um, and that when they got a divorce... I was taking it really, really hard and felt like I didn't have a dad. So she was like, you have a dad. It's God. And I took that <laughs> to mean that I was literally the son of God. Uh, and that stems from a real life conversation I've had with my mother. Oh, with God. Yeah. She told me that she was still a virgin after having me. And I said, well, that makes me the son of God. And I just ran with it. So, like, <laughs> she was obviously joking, but that's where that comes from. Oh, uh, God, that's great. Yeah, so let, let, let's skip through that. So you you had the you had the few with Tobin. Is at one point he fucking he fucking power bombed your mama. Yeah. I told the blacklist I was like, fine, give him Sam. But I was like, but I am not going to show that I'm weak. Actually, what I wanted to do was show that I was emotional. So I power bombed my mom, and I, <laughs> I I drop down to a knee, and there's like tears. I'm like sad about it. You know, I'm upset. I just hurt my mother, yeah. and I submitted it like that. And when I read it on the show, you had edited it because you were putting the show up at the time. You And you, you didn't even tell me, but I assume it was because you wanted me to be a stone cold bastard. Yes. So Jay edits it. And the final uh, show of it is me power bombing my mom and then just standing over her lifeless body. Just like not giving a fuck. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. So, and and uh, mind you, that actually went over. Yeah. Like, yo, we fuck up. That so you're welcome, shithead. No, well, thank you. I, I okay, so <laughs> you didn't tell me who. <laughs> so we do resolution, and Theo and I have a really good match. It was a lot of fun. Uh, it ended with me power bombing him on the stairs, and I retain. Yep, and he fought him again, so, right? Huh? You fought him again, right? Uh, not after that. No, I went to trance. Okay, yes. trance, and I revive our eternal feud. Apparently, yeah. um. And he's he's officially started the family, and yes. it was him and Sid Harrison and uh, Eli. And like yeah. I don't, I think Justin Ray's was joining probably. The but the but the fast forward because you know I don't want to keep people forever. But right, the fast we're, forward, yeah, we're yeah. going. So it's me, it's the family versus me and the blacklist basically. Yeah, and Trance ends up beating me. At, 
college got really busy and I wasn't playing very much. He beats me. And then I just decided, I'm sure everyone thought that I lost, got really pissed off and took my ball and went home again. But <laughs> I, I moved to be around my family. I got super busy with school. And so I left OCW. John for, for I was like, I don't have the title anymore. So I don't need to keep putting in the content if I don't really have the time. Cause I was like, from like 8 a.m. to 11 p.m., I was doing school and work, and then I was coming home and catching the blacklist at midnight and writing RPs with them. Yeah. So Stuff. I was like, you know, I I'm just gonna take time and have fun with my family. Yeah. Um. So now this is so basically so this is where his his story ends or or does yeah. it? So he That's he's gone it. about a year, right? Yeah. You weren't because you weren't here for 15. 15 sucked. I actually was- bought it without telling anybody except Sean and I was going to come back and wrestle, but it sucked. It was awful. It was so bad. It was so bad. Yeah. So now we fast forward, uh, 15, uh, we had a hiatus and whatnot. And then, um, you know, as you know, 16 season 11, it's going crazy. It's yo fucking people are coming left and right. So we have obviously, uh, what's known as Ragnarok now, but we have like, um, you know, uh, Trey golden, uh, um, Nathan Carter, a fucking cast and blah, blah blah blah. But before that, there's a guy that shows up. His name is the Monster, mm-hmm. and he seems, uh, you know, he seems like an okay guy. Kind of, kind of a little bit of dry wit in the in the shout box. Like, oh, he's a funny guy. I like him. He's kind of funny. I like it. Uh, and then he writes, and it's like, oh shit, it's not a little violent, a little violent, uh, you know, a little little kind of super villainy, but not bad, not bad. A couple weeks go by, he's a really good fucking writer. A couple weeks go by, oh, he's a bad guy. He's a bad. A couple weeks go by, like. We gotta see this guy. You gotta see, you know, he's, he's a good egg. He's a, he's a good catch. He's a good writer. He's a really good fucking writer. It's a good story. It's a little violent, but, you know, tra- tone it down. Tones it down, keeps writing, keeps writing. Oh, everyone's like, oh, it's a good fuck. Hey, this guy, this guy's great. It's great. It's great. So now it comes to debut time, and I see a video of the monster, and I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. I see the entrance and the music, and the, I'm like, oh, God, no. Quickly just start fucking go, I go back to my, to my PM and I'm I'm all like I'm all like you, dude you gotta you gotta fix this kid <laughs> all right rookie you look re- you no know, um this is very bad uh you look terrible um you gotta fix your music you done too much good work to you know to just throw it all away with looking like garbage please dude uh, just fix it real quick and then I get a reply I'm like do you know who I am I'm like shut the fuck up of course I know who you are you the monster. So then I'm like, I don't know. So I look at the video and that fucking gamer Texas OCW Cody Storm, the <laughs> most anticlimactic. I was like, oh, oh, it's you. Hmm. But you're writing really good. This doesn't make any sense. Your writing is really good. It used to, it used to be. And then he does his match. I'm like, oh, he's he's good, but he's not that. Hmm. So the match gets played, and immediately. Certain people just cashing out. It's Cody Storm. Don't care. Cashing out. Don't give a fuck. I'm like, you, 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 you can't say that because look at the fucking six weeks prior. Right. This is look, look, look. I, I thought it, all he had to do was use a free game, uh, gamer tag change, yeah. and the rules would probably still be going to this day. I was like, well, oh, let's explain to you why that didn't happen. I still cheap. should have done it, but there was a bit more to it. I thought I was going to debut like a month before I did. Oh, uh, well, yeah, you had a whole con- convoluted story. I was like, oh, and some people checked out. But, you know, basically the moral of this hour story basically is, is yeah. that uh, nobody currently can, uh, you know, complain or say this, that, the other. Because if you look at the amount of shit that this young man has gone through <laughs> to reach where he's gone, uh, long story short, you know, hot shot to riot. Uh, you know, international champion, TV champion, fucking two world, right. <laughs> fucking two world title shots, only given one. <laughs> world championship run, resolution. I think main event. Did it? Was it the main? Yeah, was it the last match? Yep. Yeah, yeah. You basically did everything, you know, and you could. You basically, I was like, oh, he did everything he had to do, so he beat the game. He's done. Only to come back, and then not only to come back, but to come back, you know, completely different with writing chops and people like oh he's pretty you know he's, he's okay he's good to the fact that even uh to pre unblocks him everybody's <laughs> friends everybody likes to you know so basically that that's that's just the long gist of this entire story that i hope somebody listens to. i hope a rookie listens to this this shit maybe in the car or whatever they're doing and they get an idea of like it's not easy it's not quick it's not fast but it is kind of rewarding and the friends you make and you know the shit that happens and if you take this the advice you can do 
cool things and be remembered and you know the fucking annals of useless e fighting. That's the thing. Like a lot of people want instant gratification and then oh I'm the best. I just became champion two months in. Yay! No, it doesn't. You gotta put in the fucking work. So for someone to be like oh they don't appreciate me. You can't say shit because look what happened to Cody Monster Storm. <laughs> look at that shit. Look at that shit. And come back and you fucking tell me to fucking being the villain of the entire roster. A pain in my fucking ass. <laughs> a pain in my ass. Just thirsty, uh, over, over competitive, unstoryline, fucking goofy nobody. And look at it now. Who I'm pretty, I'm like 97% sure he's going to be on Lucian as well. So, not the title shot, obviously. No world title, oh, obviously. But, you know, because you stink. Yeah. You know, and actually, no, you're kind of, I don't think you're as good as you were. Cause I think you've, you've mellowed out a bit. But I think you're still pretty good. You're still, you're in like, the ring? Yeah, or writing? in the ring. In the ring. Writing, uh, fucking writing is exponentially be better. dominant this year. I, I think it's a very difficult game to be a killer in yeah. because uh, the reversals yep. go waves. So yeah, no, but you just turned it turned it all around. It's like it's basically a story of hope. Yeah, I mean, if I if I think that it really shows anything, it's that I think if you compare me in stark contrast to the ambition guys, they were really good at story, and then they started to get better in the ring, but they made their name and won their titles with story, and I did it with fighting, and then I worked the other way around. So. With the 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 argument, the conversation we were having the other day about is this a sim fed? Is it all about stories? Is it all about competition? You can really do it either way. Yeah, it's, you just need to do it the right way. They, they, wow, that's fucking exact. Thank you. That's perfect. That's ex- that's the exact fucking uh, that. There you go. That's the exact thing you I, I want to cut about. out the entire rest of it and just have a one minute death. Yeah, just have a one minute test. This is Cody <laughs> Storm, man. You can do it the right way. You can do it the <laughs> wrong way. <laughs> no, but I think it's, I just think it's funny because yesterday it had me fucking cry and you're like, you <laughs> threw me through a glass thing. You, you tried to kill me. <laughs> you ran me over. <laughs> I think. Oh man, I was, and that, the thing is like, there, there's, I'm, I'm sure I've done way worse. I, I've mentioned I've done way worse to people. But I, if you if you come to my perspective, you understand why. Yeah, like, no, like, was, yeah you're either sure. on my radar or you're not. If you're not on my radar, it's fine. If you're on my radar, it's usually for something good because I just want people to you know to do good stuff, write yeah. good, you know. And the thing is, it's competitive, obviously, but you can you can succeed by not being the best on the sticks. You just have to be smart about it. That's basically the way it is. Don't gift wins and just. You know, do what you gotta do. It might sound contradictory. It might sound like people just making things up, but it's, it's basically just that's that's how it is. You just gotta like, you know, you'll you'll play it and you'll you'll figure it out. If you have if you have a good foundation, people will help you. I know it's a little hard on PS4 because you just you just have the Penguin and Jacob Trance. Really, you don't have people like yeah. I'm sure Aries is not holding court with people, and I know Leon is only on certain times. And I know I know he's not holding court either. And Trance is the fucking GM, so you know he has the job of GMing. So I get it. That's why you know riots in the, is a different animal because there's so many veterans there saying, "Don't do this, don't do that. That's stupid. Fix that." You know, Terminal doesn't have that. And then in addition, you know, uh, only people I really speak to, like I, I just had to yell at Cassie to get to get aim, and he just got like literally maybe an hour ago. I know B17 uses it, and Jackson uses it, and uh, the Dennis crew uses it. Well, just basically Dennis and Sophia. That's it. But that's the best way to fucking get my ideas or or for me to shit on your ideas or to tell you yes or to tell you no. That's the best way. Even when I'm fucking arguing with Cody Storm, it was through fucking stupid ass aim. Oh, you really painted me like a fucking villain, dude. You were a villain in my eyes, man. <laughs> you were the man holding me down even though all I did was win, right? <laughs> all I do is win and you <laughs> hold me back. <laughs> you were thirst bucket. But yeah, you see, you turned it all around and... All we can say is that it's, I'm sure you're gonna have a fucking uh, another good year coming, and um, maybe when it comes to awards, you might get one. You might be nominated uh, oh, for like man. the RP shit. I don't know. I'm gonna pull Omar Gibbs. I'm gonna win Rookie of the Year, guys. Sorry, Sean. Forget <laughs> about it. Maybe I should put you as rookie. Uh, I should put you in the rookie category, but technically you're not, so it's weird. Right. I don't know, but yeah. So that does it with us for the fucking desk. I want to thank uh, the Son of God for spending some time and going through his history. I'll do this with other people if they can actually remember this shit. The only reason I chose Cody, like I said before, was because 
his memory of events is so fucking uh, clear, <laughs> clear, a lot clearer than mine. Like, if I was doing it, this would be 20 minutes of me saying, yeah, I threw him through the glass and then fucking <laughs> fuck him because he's a ba- he's a cunt. And uh, and then like he won a belt and it was like fucking stupid and everyone was bored. Uh, do the things you're supposed to do, but not the ones you're not supposed to do. The end. So that's why I, I asked him to come on. Like Smite was like, I'll do it. I'm like, yeah, but you don't remember. You, his memory is so selectively awful, and he'll just make that's up. Stupid. He'll just make up shit. He still thinks he's a world champion and he's not. And it I got mean, to the point where I thought he was. I'm like, was he? And like, no. Like, oh yeah, you're right. He's not. Ugh. <laughs> so yeah so thanks cody and uh, i hope i hope rookies at least listen to it. i know a lot of people won't because obviously but and it's me yeah but uh <laughs> it's still it's still hated it's still me it's still okay. you. so i hope uh rookies at least listen to this because it, it is kind of important on the struggle and you know how you make it here and you know like i said it's not it's not it's a it's a marathon not a sprint cody any parting words or god monster god son of god <laughs> any parting words no, uh, I think the only other thing that I was thinking is that, like, you know, we always say that people on Riot, after the shows are posted, all we do is argue and we complain and we bitch and moan. And on Turmoil, everyone's like, yeah, good job and handshaking. And I, I, I want to make it clear that, like, there's there's good criticism, you know? Yeah. I think that's part of what may be holding Turmoil back a little bit is that you all should. And I think they're starting to more. You don't have to be nasty to each other, but you should give your opinions and thoughts even if you don't like something because it's going to make everybody better hopefully yeah like i like i said because basically well not actually like they told cody you think you're going to kill ocw you can't write for shit okay i'll just win and come back and now yeah so right proving people wrong so thank you for your time uh, you. maybe next time we'll uh we'll do another desk maybe i'll have a round table and grab a bunch of people and uh yeah so see you fuckers next week okay, or maybe not i don't know all right okay bye fuck your mothers or whatever bye